Hello, welcome to another edition of Ask David. Autumn's well and truly here now. We've got a reasonable amount of wind today, so please forgive the slight windy background noise. But you know, the sun is out and there's plenty of gardening to be getting on with. And you've sent in some of your pressing gardening questions for me to answer. So I'll get on and answer them. Now Stephanie's got in touch about some shrubby salvias. She's got some of the Mexican salvias I think and she's asking about pruning them. Uh, she says they're still in full flower and she's wondering whether to tackle them now with the secateurs or really what to do. So Stephanie, my gut reaction with salvias is they're not bone hardy and although we've had a few mild winters where they might have sailed through the winter, I think in most winters they might take a little bit of a hit if we had some hard frosts uh, and some fierce winter weather in the next few months. So my inclination would be not to do any pruning to them unless they are so tall that they're wobbling about in the ground or in the soil. Um, in which case then I just tip back by about a third of the height of the bush. But if they're not wobbling and they're fairly secure in the soil, then I'd leave well alone uh, and I would tackle that pruning, cutting them quite hard back. I'd tackle that pruning probably around the end of March, sometime around April perhaps. Depends on the weather and when we get through into some reliable mild weather where we're not going to get harsh frosts. So at this time of year, leave well alone, perhaps just tip them back a little bit and enjoy those flowers. Gillian sent in a picture and a query about some weird growths that have popped up in her raspberry canes. Um, these look like fungal uh, fruiting bodies really Gillian, so it's the structure that pops up above the ground in the autumn uh, and then spreads fungal spores around and these are not damaging to your plants, these are just decomposer fungi that are breaking down the organic matter, any dead organic matter that's in the soil and by the looks of it you've either put a bark mulch or some sort of mulch over the surface of the soil and I think that's what this is, these fungi are just breaking down those um, remains in the soil and returning the nutrients back to the soil. So in any case they're really doing you a favour. The fungi to be really careful about are the ones that are sort of um, mid-brown straw coloured, quite large and that come from right at the base of woody plants. Um, these are generally speaking honey fungus fruiting bodies uh, and they can actually spread on the roots of your plants and cause lots of damage. But in this case these small delicate tiny little fungi are doing you a favour. Now Francis was lucky enough to get some cobia plants given earlier in the season uh, and has planted them in the garden and they've grown really well. Uh, grown all over the place uh, and have had some lovely blooms on them. So Kabea is the cup and saucer vine and it's generally grown as a sort of half hardy annual really. The point is being made that these are now, <laughs> these are growing in Scotland and they've already had minus five uh, and Francis's question is whether to leave them in the ground, whether they'll survive over the winter and really what to do about them. So. As I say, they're generally grown as an annual plant. They're not bone hardy. I'm surprised if they've survived this minus five already. My inclination would be to cut them down quite hard, quite close to the base, say down to about a foot or 30 centimeters above where they're coming out of the ground or the soil or the compost. Um, carefully take the plant out with as much of the root as possible. Carefully take it out of the soil or the compost, pot it up and keep it in a cold greenhouse or one that's certainly frost free. Uh, and then you stand a chance of getting these sort of half hardy perennial climbers through the winter. I doubt really whether you'll be lucky, um, so I'm sorry to sound a bit negative, but really to be honest, you've had the enjoyment of them during the summer and I think you'd be doing really well if you got them through the winter. Anyway, it's worth a chance uh, and if you don't manage to get them through the winter, then you can buy seed of Kabea uh, and start them off in around about March time so that you've got some new plants to plant out ready for next year. 
Next, Patricia has got in contact asking for some advice about a rampant grapevine. She says it's growing right over a pergola and she's not really sure how to control it. This is quite a common problem because grapes we tend to be a bit tentative with. We think they're making all the growth, they look terribly healthy and we daren't touch them or prune them back. But really they need quite hard pruning back to a main framework and that's best done either in late autumn or through the winter months, but certainly any time before the sap starts to move in the grapevine. And that's normally before around about the mid to late February to be honest you need to get on top of it before the plant is thinking about growing because the trouble is grapes can bleed uh, sap and they will do that just as they're starting into growth so if you cut them then then there's a chance that they can bleed so I would tackle it as soon as the foliage drops off the plants so that you can see what you're doing uh, and prune back all the vigorous stems over the outside of the plant, prune those back to leave a main framework that's covering the pergola or the wall or the arch or whatever you're growing your grapevine on. If it's become so overgrown and such a tangled mess, then it's probably worth being really brutal with it and cutting it quite close down to ground uh, and then training in some new shoots that will create a framework covering your pergola uh, and then you can prune back to that framework in future years. But in any case, as soon as those leaves drop off is the time to tackle it. And our last question this week comes from Angie and she's asking what she can grow in an unheated greenhouse over the winter months to make really good use of it. So Angie, my unheated greenhouse really gets packed really with all the tender plants that I grow outside in the garden during the summer. I push all those into the greenhouse to overwinter them. So that's things like pelargoniums and some of the fuchsias that aren't tough enough to survive the winter. So it's really useful from that point of view. But I also grow a few lettuce in there, some of the hardy lettuce. Little Gem is a really good example of one that will go through the winter in a well-lit unheated greenhouse but there are lots of other hardy varieties of that too. I grow some perpetual spinach and some chard in there as well so I've got plenty of leafy crops uh, that will benefit from that frost-free environment and grow as long as the glass house is in good light. And then lastly the other thing I do is pot up quite a few bulbs into pots ready for next spring. Um, I leave those out in the garden uh, just for the next few weeks just to get a bit of cold treatment around about six to eight weeks should be enough and then I bring those into the cold greenhouse to start them into growth and then once they're probably about an inch or um, 2.5 centimeters high I then bring those bulbs indoors and force them into flower in some moderate heat not too warm just moderate heat uh, and that gives me a real sense of hope for next year and some flowers in the weeks around Christmas. That's it for us, David this week another edition next week don't forget there's plenty of gardening to be getting on with all that bulb planting so get out there while the weather's as good as it is today and enjoy your gardening. <laughs>